You didn't really think we were only going to do five picks for the Clone Wars, did you? Nope. Hello there, welcome back to the channel. I am Grand Moff Tony, and today we are continuing with our wishlist series, and with a slight change in the plan scheduling, today we are taking a look at The Clone Wars. Now, The Clone Wars is a sprawling anthology that introduces a myriad of new characters, as well as expanding on some familiar faces, so it's a great place to look to find some new potential Black Series figures. I was actually kind of late to the game on Clone Wars, I didn't start watching it until I think about 2011-2012, so I kind of missed the first few years, but once I got into it, it's a welcome part of my yearly Star Wars watch through. I look forward to it every year. So with that said, it's it's kind of impossible to boil such a massive series down to just five characters and a couple of honourable mentions. So this time we are breaking the rules and we are expanding the list out to ten. We're doing ten picks for characters from the Clone Wars that I would like to see come to the Black series. Now, aside from that, all of my usual rules apply. We're not looking at Haslabs, we're looking at regular releases or deluxe releases. So let's get into a few honorable mentions. First, I'd like to see Senator Ornfree Tar come to the Black Series. I think that would be fantastic. He's one of my favorite senators. He's got such a great design, and doesn't he just look like he'd look brilliant as a Black Series figure? I think so. I'd also like to see Commander Gregor come to the line. We've got Hunter and the Bad Batch, we've got Delta Squad, so obviously they would use the same Hunter body, but I feel like it would look great to get Gregor in the line. And in a similar vein, I would like to see a multi-pack of D-Squad. I think that would be fantastic. Get those droids and that little major Meba Gascon in there. I think that would be a fantastic multi-pack set, but honorable mentions out of the way, let's get into the actual picks for the list. Coming in at number 10, we have Embo, the Kyuzo Bounty Hunter. I absolutely love this guy. He's got such a fantastic design, and the Black Series, as I've talked about in the past, has a tremendous history for giving us great bounty hunters, and this could be another one, with another fantastic alien head sculpt as well. Embo just cuts such a striking silhouette. I think he'd look absolutely brilliant on the shelf, on, as part of like a, a Jabba's Palace display with him just hanging around in the background, or a larger Clone Wars display. I think he'd look brilliant. I'm not sure if I would go like soft goods with his long trench coat look. I think, as I said before with Zam Wassel, I think something similar to what they did with Fennec Shand would look really good on Embo, just like semi-soft plastic that's got great design work worked into it and just has a fantastic paint job. I think that'd be fantastic. Really, all you would need to include to get me to buy a Black Series Embo would just be give me that helmet. That helmet is a must-have, obviously. Throw in his bowcaster. But if you really wanted to sell me a deluxe set, just toss in his little pet Anuba Maroc and I will gladly drop deluxe prices for it in a heartbeat. Embo comes in at number 10. <laughs> At number 9, I would like to see Pre Vizsla come to the line. This is a pretty popular choice in the fanbase, and I feel like now is a better time than ever to bring him in. With the success of the Death Watch Mandalorian, Pre Vizsla is a character that you could very easily put on that body and come away with an absolutely stellar Black Series figure. And really, that's my biggest sell for getting Pre Vizsla into the line. It's, we have the Death Watch Mandalorian body. Why would they come out with a body like that if it weren't to make more figures that can use it? They've already used the body to give us an Axe Woves figure. I feel like Pre Vizsla would just be the icing on the cake, and using that fantastic Death Watch Mandalorian body, it just makes sense to me, because Pre Vizsla is the leader of Death Watch. If you're gonna put him on any body, it's gonna be the Death Watch Mando body. As a Mandalorian, he's got some pretty obvious accessories. Throw in the jetpack, let's have the removable helmet, and I think Obviously, those Westar 35 blaster pistols are a must-have, but most of all, it is another opportunity to get the Darksaber out onto shelves. I feel like the Darksaber is an accessory that we need to give 
as many people as many opportunities to get hold of as possible. It's such a great accessory, and this is a logical inclusion for the Clone Wars line. Let's bring in the character who introduced us to the Darksaber. Pre Vizsla comes in at my number 9 choice. Like you said, only the strongest shall rule. At number 8, you have General Kalani. Now, I said in my Attack of the Clones video that I would like to see more of the Separatist leadership in the Black series, and here you have another example of a fantastic Separatist leader that would look brilliant in the Black series. We know this line does a fantastic job with droids, so let's bring in the super tactical droid. Let's bring in General Kalani and open up the potential for more repaints of additional super tactical droid characters like Kraken, for instance. But out of all of them, I think Kalani is the one that I want to see the most. He has such an intimidating presence during the Onderon arc, and then he's just gone and he disappears for all that time until he finally returns in Rebels. He's a brilliant droid villain and I think he would look incredible in Black Series form. I'm thinking in my head of all the great droids that we've seen in the Black Series, like the HK droid, the New Republic security droid, and Q90, and I'm thinking how good would General Kalani look as a Black Series figure with those incredibly striking colours, that dominant pose with his hands posed behind his back, I think he'd look incredible. He would be a permanent fixture on my shelf. And great news for Hasbro, he doesn't really need a ton of accessories. Just an E5 battle droid blaster, really. I mean, you could really push the boat out and include like a holographic Count Dooku for him to converse with, but I think really just the blaster, you'll be fine. General Kalani comes in at number eight. Then we are lost. Salvage the remaining arms and withdraw the army. Bring them to Agamar. What about Gah? At number seven, we have Admiral Trench. Now, this was another one of those incredibly unique character designs. Admiral Trench just looks incredibly intimidating. He's a giant spider. What's not to like? And of course, over the course of the Clone Wars, Trench was defeated and returned with an additional mechanical piece over and over again, until obviously we see him in Season 7, and he's like, more or less half droid at that point. He's been completely augmented, but he still has all of that intimidation factor that I find so fascinating. And I think that's the version of Trench I'd like to see, and I don't know if it plays into the fact that the Black Series obviously does really well with droids, so I think maybe combining great Black Series droids with great Black Series aliens, you have a logical choice. It's Admiral Trench. Now, given all of the articulation that I would need to be a part of this figure, it's gonna have to be deluxe. It has to be. You're talking like ball joints up the yin yang all over his shoulders, multiple arms going off in multiple different directions, and hey, if you can get those mandibles to even better. This would be a deluxe figure that I would gladly drop a ton of money on. Like, just to get all of those paint apps on there, all of that intricate detail on the droid mechanical parts, I think he'd look absolutely brilliant as a Black Series figure. So he 100% earns his spot at number seven on my list. I smell fear, and it smells good. Coming in at number six, we have Duchess Satine Kreez. I absolutely love this character, and I think she would be a brilliant inclusion to the Black Series. In the same sort of vein that I went on and on and on about getting Red Dress Padme in the line for the Phantom Menace video, this is my Red Dress Padme of the Clone Wars. I want Satine. I want that brilliant Mandalorian royalty wardrobe on display on my shelf, the fantastic headdress. I want some brilliant soft goods done on the dress. I can see it in my head and I know I like it. And plus, I brought this up with Queen Amidala as well. We've got to get some good guy thrones into the line. Get me Duchess Satine and do that throne. I'll buy that 
without hesitation. And really all you would need to include in that set would just be her deactivator pistol, because obviously she's a pacifist, so there's no weapons, but obviously she's got that just in case. Really, I think this is an opportunity for the Black Series to really excel in soft goods. This could be the single best soft good figure in the entire line if it's done properly, and I would eat that up no problems, no questions asked. She looks fantastic in the show. I think she'd look great on the shelf. Duchess Satine comes in at number six. Number five is a bit of a gimme. It's fives. Yeah, this one goes around the community all the time. We need fives in the line. I feel like it's more or less guaranteed that we're going to get him eventually. I mean, we've got Echo, Jesse is coming now. They must be doing fives eventually, but I understand why it's so important to so many Clone Wars fans to get fives into the line. He is one of the most important clone characters in the show. He's one of the first that we're really introduced to way, way back in season one when we meet him on that asteroid. Fives is just an easy pick. He really is. He's so easy that I didn't even really care where I put him on the list, so I just put him at five because I thought it was funny. And really, I do agree with what the community is saying. Everything that we need to make fives is in the line already. So just do it. Just give us fives and we'll stop asking for them. But for the time being, fives comes in hilariously at number five. I just need you to listen to me. Please. I was framed because I know the truth. The truth about a plot. A massive deception. Well, there's a sinister plot in the works against the Jedi. I have proof of it. I can prove that everything that I know is true beyond a shadow of a doubt. The evidence in here. It's, it, it's in here. It's in all of us. Every clone. Organic chips built into our genetic code to make us do whatever someone wants. They even kill the Jedi. It's all in here. Oh, you don't believe me! At number four, we have Gar Saxon, another brilliant Mandalorian character that could benefit so much from that Death Watch Mandalorian body. Wouldn't he just look fantastic? We have the Maldalorian in the line already on that age-old Jango Fett body. Let's get the leader of the Maldalorians on that brand new body. One of the most striking things about Gar Saxon in the Clone Wars is his helmet. So his helmet would really be the most important part of the figure. I want to see that visor look like it's glowing. I mean, obviously we can't make it glow, but you can paint it in a way where it looks like it's glowing. Honestly, I feel like this is another one of those common sense inclusions. You've got that Death Watch Mandalorian body. Here is a Mandalorian character that would very much look good on my shelf. So let's put Gar Saxon on that body. Let's get him in that striking black and red armor and give him that black, red, and yellow helmet to just really round out the look. And you know what? I will really struggle to decide whether I want to have have him helmet on or helmet off. I won't be able to make up my mind. I, I will probably keep changing it just because it's such an awesome look, but I do like to have the heads out. Obviously, he's a Mandalorian, so throw in those blaster pistols, give me the jetpack, give me the helmet, but maybe just to mix things up, maybe to like, I don't know, separate him and make him stand out more from the other Mandalorians in the line, I think this would be a good opportunity to reuse that Boba Fett flame effect from the Return of the Jedi Deluxe. I think it would go brilliantly with Gar Saxon, and I think that would really help distinguish him from the other Mandalorians in the line. Give him the flamethrower effect and give him that helmet. Just give him that beautiful helmet, and I promise I will buy it. Gar Saxon comes in at number four. Our forces are falling, we need your support! At number three, kind of a weird choice. I want to see Mother Talzin join the line. I think she'd be brilliant. This choice really 100% comes down to the design of the character. I just think Talzin looks amazing. The sharp red lines on her costume, the ghost-like face, I think that could be really well translated to the line. There would have to be, I think, a mix of hard plastic and soft goods to really capture 
how ghost-like Talzin is. And it's kind of an obscure choice because I recognize that there's not a tremendous amount that you'd be able to reuse from a Mother Talzin figure, but I mean, they used Holdo's legs for the longest time, so maybe you could use them here to really get some height in there. Talzin is just one of those characters that the Clone Wars introduced that was just drenched in mystery. I don't think we ever really got a solid answer as to what Talzin wanted. She was just always out for herself, and I feel like she's a character that needs to be represented in the Black series. Maybe we'll see some more Night Sisters come out of that. I know there are certainly one or two Night Sisters that I would like to see get into the line, but I would love to see the Great Mother come to the Black series. I think she would look absolutely brilliant and I can see the figure in my head and I know how good it looks. I I just want it. Just give me Mother Talzin. And the best thing about Talzin, she's got all that magic going for her. So all of those Palpatine force lightning effects, cast those in green plastic and you've got yourself some Mother Talzin ancient dark magic. Throw in a flaming sword of destiny and I will drop my money and buy that figure. Mother Talzin comes in at number three. You have your breath, your skill, and your sisters. You have everything needed to survive. At number two, we have the Jedi General that everyone loves to hate. It's Pong Krell. I mentioned this character briefly when I was talking about Dex in my Attack of the Clones video, and yeah. The reason I really want Dex is because it brings the Besselisk species into the Black series, and that logically leads us to Pong Krell. The Umbara arc of the Clone Wars is definitively my favorite arc of the entire series, and Pong Krell is a big part of the reason why. He's such a fascinating character, and he represents such a dark side of the Jedi Order. So yeah, I want that represented on my Black Series shelf. I want General Pong Krell in plastic form. Now obviously, like a lot of these multi-armed characters, we're gonna have to put this guy into a deluxe set to really get the best out of him. But it would be so worth it. Think of all the points of articulation we could get in there. Think of those double-bladed, double-hilted lightsabers. It would be so good. And hey, if we could even get the lightsaber hilts to fold in half the way he has them attached to his belt, kind of like the way we saw with the Dark Side Ray figure, I think that would be an even better option. I mean, think of the display options. You could have his lightsabers on his hilt, you could have him wielding one double blade, you can have him with both out, just charging through. I think it would be such a good figure, and I cannot believe we don't have him yet. I don't even need a ton of accessories. Just give me a really great, well-sculpted figure with tons of articulation, and give me those two lightsabers. And you know what? Make the lightsabers fold, and you've got your purchase. I will buy that the moment I see it. Pong Krell, a very obvious number two choice. But the number one character that I would like to see come to the Black series from the Clone Wars is Savage Opress. How do we not have this guy yet? How do we have so many Mauls and so many generic Knight Brothers, but we don't have Savage Opress in the Black series yet? This has the potential to be an exceptional figure. I'm seeing a big, bulky silhouette with armor that's well painted with dry brushing details to bring out the shine. I'm seeing a double bladed lightsaber and you know what? Throw in the spear as well. I like the spear. Let's have two options in the box. Because let's face it, because of his size, and I've said this multiple times across this series, it's probably down to the size. He's going to be a deluxe figure. So I think we could get away with asking for the lightsaber and the spear. But my God, what a fantastic figure this could be. I had back in the day an old uh, three and three quarter inch Savage Press figure, but it was pre-transformation. So he was still kind of scrawny. He only had like 
a little primitive weapon. He didn't look like the Savage that I know from the Clone Wars. That's what I would like to see in Black Series form. This massive, hulking, armoured creature that just looks so intimidating. He's got those powerful, sharp horns, that intimidating yellow and black colour scheme. It would just look so good. With the inclusion of Season 7 Maul in the Black Series, I, I kind of feel like maybe we're moving in the direction of seeing Savage one day, but I wanted to get it out there and say this is the character from the Clone Wars that I want the most. I want Savage Oppress. And really, my wanting Savage goes beyond how cool he is in the series, because Savage is the reason I started watching in the first place. I distinctly remember being out shopping in my town one day, and I stopped into a newsagent's, and there was a Star Wars magazine on the shelf, and on the cover was this incredibly fierce-looking warrior. He was obviously from Dathomir, because he had those tattoos and the horns, and I immediately went, who is this guy? Where's this guy been? I've never seen this before. And that was how I was introduced to the Clone Wars. I read the magazine, I found out that he was coming to the Clone Wars, and I was like, what, that little two-season animated flick from 2003? No, no, this was the new Clone Wars. And from there, we have a descent into watching the whole series back to back over the course of a couple of weeks, and all of a sudden, here we are. I owe all of that to Savage Press, and that's why I want him in the Black Series more than anyone else in the Clone Wars. Savage Press is the number one character from the Clone Wars that I would like to see come to the Black Series. Brother, let us share our strength. There is no need for dominance between us. Master and an apprentice, and you are the apprentice. <laughs> have grown so powerful. And I shall complete your training. Not as your brother, but as your master. So there we have it. Ten characters from the Clone Wars that I would like to see come to the Black Series. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Where are the Clone Trooper Legions? Well, I have a pretty simple explanation for that. Yes, of course, I want to see as many Clone Trooper Legions in the line as possible, but realistically, I'm not going to drop retail price for a Clone Trooper repaint, so I don't feel like I can include them on a list of things that I actively want. These are characters that I would actively pay modern day retail prices for and that's that's saying a lot because the price has gone up i don't know if i can do that for a trooper so yeah throw in whatever legions you like i would love to see them all but here are 10 characters that i would like to see in the line so let me pass this off to you do you have thoughts i know you do what are some characters from the clone wars that you would love to see come to the black series I am all ears. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm always interested in hearing your thoughts and opinions. If you haven't already, do please check out my wish lists for The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. And with Season 2 of The Bad Batch wrapping up this week, we will be back on the next episode of Wishlist to talk about five characters from The Bad Batch that I need to see in the Black series. In the meantime, I've been Grand Moff Tony. Those were my top 10 wishlist picks for Star Wars The Clone Wars. You may subscribe when ready. <laughs> Let it...